All right, welcome back everyone. So next we have up is Sam Shia, who is going to talk to us about pushing the boundaries with Tableau layout containers. Sam has been using Tableau for more than three years and has recently uh, moved across the way to join MIP, MIP, a leading consulting organization in data wrangling and visualization. So we will have Sam get set up here and start just momentarily. Which one did you pick? Screen two. Is two? Yeah. Um, and can you guys see it fine? Yes, you, thank right? you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm. Thanks for the intro, Emily. So yeah, I'm Sam. I'm placed at the office at the moment with Will and P and, and Peter. So like like Emily said, I've moved over from New Zealand a couple of months ago to Sydney. Prior to that, I hadn't even set foot anywhere in Australia, not even at the airport for a transfer flight. So it's all quite new to me. It's quite good. Oh uh, yeah, I've been using Tableau for about three years now, and I've just recently graduated with my engineering degree in electrical and electronics. So unfortunately, I've pretty much used nothing from the degree. I just went back to New Zealand last week to attend my graduation and grab my degree, which is a piece of paper which signifies my $50,000 of debt. <coughs> but anyway, that's enough about my background. That's not what we're here for. We just need to have low stuff to get into it. I think it's always a challenge to pick something decent to talk about for a presentation. I couldn't quite think of much, so I decided to go with some stuff I thought was quite cool in the past few couple of projects I had done with some clients. So that's how I've ended up with a cheesy topic titled called Pushing the Boundaries, which is layout containers and actions. How I arrived at this topic was because just recently a client wanted a data-driven dashboard, but also very web app-like. They'd serve the dashboard to their customers in an embedded viz on their landing portal web page. But their customers wanted different visualizations and functionalities, each specific to themselves. So each of the customers would see a different landing page, or see a similar landing page, but they needed to be able to navigate to their own vizs and not see, and customers wouldn't be able to see each other's. So I've made a similar example here with fruits and fruit juices, Tableau fruit juice. Over here, Jermaine and Brett are customers of the Tableau Fruit Juice Company. In this example, the customer Brett specifically requested a dashboard showing a relaxing picture of mango juice, while Jermaine requested a dashboard showing a rejuvenating picture of mandarin juice. Uh, but unfortunately, in Tableau, to my knowledge, using actions, um, only one sheet. One sheet can only navigate to one destination and you're unable to incorporate much logic into it, such as depending on who is logged in, you can just click on this, navigate to here or there. So to get around that, I had to use two separate sheets for navigation and only one of them could be displayed at any one time on the landing page based on who was logged in. <coughs> so using Tableau's dynamic layout containers, I could do this. So when you don't set a fixed height or width for a worksheet in a dashboard. If that worksheet is filtered down to have no data returned or displayed, the container holding the worksheet minimizes to its minimum width or height. When I first started using Tableau, I thought it was rather annoying because I didn't know what was going on. But in fact, <coughs> it's actually pretty useful, so I've found. So there are actually two sheets side by side here. Right now it's only displaying one. Um, <coughs> Yeah, so I found this a seamless way of allowing different people to see different content on a dashboard, making it more like an actual app. So over here we've got Jermaine logged on. In the bottom right corner is his Mandarin navigation. And if you click on, <coughs> which takes him to his Mandarin picture, once he clicks on that, and as when you're logged on as Brett, he can go see his Go and we'll take the mango juice picture. Um, I've, I've used par parameters here to demonstrate this functionality, but the same principle applies to using the username function in Tableau Server when um, someone logs on. <coughs> and just, uh, 
couple of pictures. So carry on with layout containers. Floating layout containers literally you go outside the boundaries of the dashboard. This is another way I found to have different content display for different viewers, or even just to make the dashboard feel more like an app faster. In the last example, two sheets were used to allow the customers to navigate to each of their respective dashboards. In this example here, only one sheet is used. <coughs> Again, using the function of dynamic layout containers. This app like dashboard switches between um, US baby names and executions in the US. Instead of having it switched based on the parameter here, it can be controlled by whoever is logged in as well. So to allow for the switching between the two different statistics, this dashboard consists of containers in a big floating container. I'll show you. It works in a bit, which goes outside of the Tableau dashboard boundaries. So, um, so yeah, there's actually there's a big floating container which two things I'm going to fit on the screen over here. Yeah. <coughs> yeah. So over here. Yes, yeah, so I've made my Y offset negative, so it shifts the whole that entire floating container up very high. <coughs> um, so yeah, there is a sheet over here which minimizes when the navigation parameter is set to execution, but you can't quite see it here. Um, I'll go to how it works to show you how it actually works. So concept is there's a sheet here which minimizes when executions is selected so that's this area over here and then it fills up whatever space is available when you set it to the evening so when i click executions it's minimized and this red box is what you actually see on the dashboard so effectively it's switching between you know, baby names and executions as you switch to that parameter <coughs> Yeah, um, so, well, since I've got, let's go back to this dashboard, since I'm here, I think I found, I think these two contrasting bits of data are kind of interesting, so I found in this US baby names, because firstly, my name, in China, when you, when you have to, when you have to play games, some games are age restricted, so you needed to go and, you go and register with, it's almost like a, Kind of like an ID separate to your passport, which shows you know, this is what is your age and your name. I don't have one when I was in China, so you could go online and look for someone with the identical name to me to use instead because of age. And by doing that, I found out that actually about 66% of the people with my Chinese name were female rather than male. Um, so yeah, over here, if you look in 2014, I found out something quite similar. You've got, um, if I click on Logan, got 801 unfortunate females which have been called Logan. Um, there's some other ones like, I think Jaden's quite normal. Dylan, Dylan, you wouldn't quite expect any girls to be called Dylan. <coughs> yeah. Also, if we go to executions, you can kind of see execution, uh, executions have decreased in popularity over the past 10, 20 years. And yeah, well, I can publish. I can publish stuff if anyone else wants to have a play around with it later. Um, yeah, over here, just my last thing is a another thing I've done with actions, which lets you switch your map type from a field map to a circle. This is done on the same US execution data. So over here, if I click on text, this it'll drill down. It's not quite working. Well. It doesn't display the map, but map behind here. But so it's switched from a field map to a circle map, which I thought was quite, quite interesting. Yeah, so this was done by using actions and blending. So I think it's kind of long to explain how this is done. So if anyone wants to know how to do it, you can message me and I can show you how to do that. Yeah, so I think that's that's all for me. Hope you guys have enjoyed it and it's been useful.
Yeah, so, um, that's it. That's it, guys. Thank you so much, Sam. Uh, I'll open it up to see if anybody has any questions or comments now. I'm looking through, nothing's come through on the Q&A and chatting. Uh, you know, Sam, it looks like you covered both ends of the life cycle. Yeah, that would be interesting. <laughs> Birth to death. So, yeah. so um, someone wrote in saying that they were interested in the in the parameter for changing between the pages. So maybe can you uh, explain um, that a little more? Yeah, um, sure. So I'll just let me bring it up. So this sheet called switch. Oh, and just for clarity, um, the, it was the, Ashley was interested in the changing between the pages between baby names and executions. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, so I'll, I'll show that now. Yeah, so all I've used is a sheet called is switch. If I go back to the, how it works, this, this sheet over here, <laughs> I've set a parameter which causes it to minimize by using some filters. So if I go back to and we are minimizers because you see you don't see a fixed height or width. It just minimizes down to the, the whatever thinnest it can go. So when I switch from baby names to executions, all it's doing is you switch from baby names to executions. All it's doing is kind of pushing the uh, the layout containers up and down. I go here to the switch one. <coughs> so this is, I've made a parameter called switch parameter. <coughs> All it has is two values, one or two or baby names and executions. And there's a filter here called is switch. So when it's switched to one, which is baby names, it becomes true and if not, it's false. So when it's false, filters out and there's nothing to display for this worksheet. So because there's nothing, no data to display over here, this equivalent of this sheet here getting minimized and disappearing. So that's that's the, one of the mechanics behind it switching up and down between the sheets. So it's not actually, so it's all on one dashboard. It's not navigating to another dashboard or anything. It's all within one dashboard. Answer your question well, Ashley. And I think what you touched on, which is really, I don't, was kind of like an aha for me, was that you got to make sure that it, the parameter is selected for what you want um, to show. Otherwise, if you forget, <laughs> then yeah. it's going to mess it up. <laughs> yeah, <that's, laughs> but uh, yeah, so I think that, um, yeah, your explanation was good. So thank you. Cool. Yeah, no worries. So um, thanks, Sam. That was really interesting. You do have a Twitter profile. I'm not sure if you post up too much on 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 um, there, but maybe you can post up this workbook onto Tableau Public for everyone, and then send out a tweet uh, with the hashtag TFF APAC um, with the link to it, and then people can download it. Maybe Ashley uh, would like to download it and kind of reverse engineer it and make sure um, that she can, you know, get it exactly working like she wants it to. Yeah, definitely. I'll do that, yeah. 